Good night, good night. Hey, what's up tonight? Like God is good and God is good all the time. My name is Samuel Jazz Fraser. I'm right here to your word on tonight. And Samuel, finally, is in the picture now. Samuel is so doing the fear sign at, at Mass Pack. You know, 1 Samuel chapter 7 through um, 2 through 17. So the ark remained at Curran for 20 years. You know, remember the fear sign. You know, kept bringing it from here and there. Trying, trying to find a place where to put it. So they finally, you know, try, trying to find someone. So to, to they finally decide to bring it back to uh, to the Israel. You know, so, uh, so then all the people of Israel had turned back to the Lord. So they want to turn back to, to the Lord, you know, you know. So now Samuel is in the picture. Samuel is in the picture. He said to all the Israelites, if you are returning back to the Lord, you know, you have to turn back with all your heart, you know, and you have to serve him only, you know. So they, they you know, because they say this all the time. You know, be, be, be back with the Lord. Be back with the Lord. You know, so Samuel said, be back with the Lord. This time you got to do with all your heart, and you have to serve only Him, you know. So, uh, so He also uh, preaches to them about repentance, you know. So He tell them, get rid of all your fear in God, all your out of God. Give, get rid of all that, you know. And he said, get rid of, get rid of, you know, and commit yourself to the Lord and serve Him only. And if He, then He may deliver you out of the hands of the fear side. you know. So Israel, mom. And so we gripped the um the nation for twenty years. You know, the art was put away like an unwanted box in the attic. You know, so it seemed as if the law had abandoned his people. And Samuel now is, is a grown man now. You know, so God talked good about him when he was a boy. And now he's a grown man. He done just like what God said he was gonna do. He riled them up, you know, action by saying that if you fully, truly you know, turn it back to God. You know, do something about it. Do something about it. You know, throw all your, get rid of all your foreign God. You know, serve only God. You know, start sacrificing towards God. You know, do something about it. You coming back, do something about it. You know, so that's what Samuel was telling them. Samuel urged the Israelites to get rid of all the foreign gods. You know, so, um, so today, there are much more, you know, than gods of wood and stone. You know, so about they are just as dangerous, you know, so serving other God. You see what God will do you. You know, he putting the people in the council and all of them. You know, you were, you know, especially, you know, they took the art and then they serving and buy it down to it like it was a true God. You know, so the Israelite turned back to God and Samuel had said, if you truly turn back to God, get rid of all your own other gods, commit yourself to the Lord. You know, completely, and God made to leave you from the fear side. You know, so the Israelite had put away their body, they put away all their false gods, you know, and it saved the law only for right now. You know, so we have to save God only, but the Israelite have a hard time doing that. They always say, I'm going to turn, you know, we be back with God now. We back with God now. You know, we're going to do whatever it takes. They always do that. You know, but they have a difficult time. Disserving on in God. They feel like they all we got to create something to serve and they know how a true mighty God that they have. Because every time they get in trouble, what they do? They call God. You know. So then Samuel has said, Assembling all the Israelites to mass mass path, you know, and I will intercede with you with with the law for you. Now see this is another Moses right here. You know, so he's saying, you, you know, all y'all come on similar over here at this park over here. You know, we, we about to have a meeting here. You know, I'm going to intercede, you know, with the Lord for y'all. You know, right along with him for y'all. So there, there, there was another almost um, to intercede, you know, in, intercede with God, you know, for the people. You know, so at the park, they had special significance for the Israelite nation. It was there that the Israelite had gathered to mobilize against the true, the trials of Benjamin. You know, now Samuel was appointed to be a leader. You, you know, he gonna be that judge. He gonna be that leader. You know, he gonna guide them in the right direction. You know, right now he he talking with princes right now, so he leading in the right direction. You know, he's saying y'all truly, you know, back with God. You got to uh, you got to do something. You you got to show action. You know, you got to get rid of all your foreign gods, and you got to sacrifice. You got to bow down to the only um God and not the other foreign gods. 
you know. So when they had assembly at, at this house, they threw water. They threw water and they put it on the ground, you know. They put it out before the Lord. And on that day, they had fast. See, 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 they have to, see, Samuel is telling them, you know, now y'all got to clean yourself. You know, you get back with God, you know, now you got to fast. You know, and they put water down on the ground that they represent, you know, the serving God. You know, they, uh, so they're doing all this here stuff. See, I'm going to tell you, you got to do all this here stuff because y'all been away from God for four years. In about 20 some years, you know. So they confessing, you know, to confessing all they wrong doing. They didn't know that was wrong, you know, serving other gods against the law, you know. So Samuel was serving as a leader of Israel, you know, at this park. And now Samuel, Samuel is their judge. He their leader, and he leading them in the right direction right now. You know, so they're putting water on the ground before the law was a sign of repentance for, from their sin. Turning from the idol gods and determined to obey God alone. So that's what that meant when they was putting the water all on the ground and stuff. So Samuel had become the last in the long line of Israel judges. You know, a judge that was both a political and a religious leader. You know, now God was Israel's true leader. Why the judge was to be God's spokesman to the people and minister, you know, of justice uh, throughout the land. You know, so why some of the Israel were judging rely more on their own judgment? See, that's what that's, that's what Israel will make a mistake at. You know, they'll make a lot of judgment on their own understanding. You know, they stop leaning on God. Every time they don't have a leader, they don't have a king. Just stop leaning on God and they do whatever they want to do. You know, and when you ain't got to lead, you, you're supposed to lean on God. Call it on God. You know, don't do what you want to do because you ain't got a leader. You're not a child. You know, they are, they are grown and the Israelites feel like they want to do whatever they want to do. You know, so why some of the Israelites with judgment rely more on their own judgment than on God? You know, Samuel obedience and dedication to God. You know, made him one of the greatest judges of Israel history. Now, he made history because just like, just like God had told them weeks ago, when I put that out weeks ago, God said, I'm owing somebody. I'm owing somebody to be a, a, a great leader. They're going to be a, 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 a judge. They're going to be a great minister. He's going to be all this thing. And Samuel was just that. You know, he made history because he was the best leader. You know, and uh, uh, and judge. You know, he was the best judge in everything. You know, because you know they had devil. You had all the judges back then. But then they saying Samuel was the best judge Israel had. You know, so when the Philistine heard that Israel had assembly at this park, the rulers of the Philistine they came up to attack. So they getting afraid now. They getting afraid now because they realizing that the Israelites they getting together now. And they wonder if they got their God back on their side. You know, who is this Samuel? You know, so now you got Samuel involved. You got God about to be involved. So the first time they looking outside trying to figure out what they're having a meeting about. You know, so when the Israelites heard of it, they was afraid because of the first time. See, they're afraid of the first time because they didn't like the first time took over their land. The Canaanites, that's supposed to be their land. You know, but they in their own land. That, that the fear sign took over and they wind up under them, you know, so they're afraid of the fear sign. So when the Israelites heard, heard of it, they was afraid because, because of the fear sign. So they gathered as this Paul to confess and they was wrong and Samuel had told them to save God alone. You know, so now the fear sign heard and wants to attack them. You know, so Samuel is preaching on repentance. You know, he is all grown now. He ain't no little boy now. You know, God brag on him as a little boy now. He doing the thing that, that God said he was going to do. So the fear sound was right to be afraid, you know, of the repentance. Because once you repent, you know, then, then God, God take a, a different look on everything, you know. So God is seeking Israel because we God fighting for them, Israel was invisible to the fear sound. The fear sound know they cannot win. You know, if God on their side, they know that. So that's why they 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 figuring out. Okay, they at the meeting. You know, with what they're talking about. You know, so they said to Samuel, "Do not stop." So Israel told Samuel, "Don't don't stop crying out to God." You know, because we need God help right now. Because the first I heard that we all at this park with, with, with the meeting and we we discussing stuff. So you know, so 
Oh, we need God. Don't stop crying to God, you know. Cry out to God. We need we need his help. You know, so the Israelite clearly understood that Samuel's relationship to the Lord, God of Israel, they knew Samuel to be God prophet. You know, because God said, I'm about to I'm about I'm about to I'm gonna give y'all a prophet. And you're going to be the best prophet, the best judge, the best minister, the best leader that you're going to have. He, he had multiple hats, you know. And now I see the Israelites, they, they understand, you know, they understand that Samuel is a prophet under God. You know, see, they knew Samuel to be God's prophet. So the one who delivered God's message, same thing Moses did, you know. So he, he said, Samuel said, I'm going to intercede with y'all with God. You, you know, so now they seeing that he, he intercede, he sent messages to God and translated back to the Israelites. That the same thing Moses did and Joshua did. You know, so they understood that Samuel now to be a judge over Israel as well as a leader. You know, so then Samuel had took a second um, lamb, you know, sacrificed it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. And he cried out to the Lord of Israel behalf. And the Lord answered him. You know, so now, you know, Samuel is sacrificing to the Lord because he praying, he, he crying out to God on the behalf of the Israelites, you know, and God heard. So why Samuel is sacrificing the burnt offering, the field sign draw near to engage Israel in battle, you know. But that day, the Lord, he came with thunder, you know, with a loud thunder verse. You know, against the fear sign. And he threw them into such a panic that they were all rowdy before the Israelites. You know, now sometimes God got a soft verse. Then sometimes he got a thunder verse. You know, so he put all of them in confusion. You know, when they heard his, his thunder verse all out loud and stuff. So they declare that they need the law now more than ever. They need the law more than ever. They're telling on Samuel, you know. Keep on crying out to him. We need God more than ever. Right now, the fear sign is coming. There is near. You know, so Samuel cried out um, to the Lord on the behalf of Israel and offered sacrifices on their behalf. So the Lord heard and answered Samuel. You know, so God thundered against the fear sign, threw them into confusion, you know, and they were defeated before the Israel. You know, so when the men of Israel rushed out, out the park, they pursued the fish. I see when the Israelites heard God's voice, they heard that thunder, they didn't know that was God. You know, that was a clue, a clue that God is on their side. You know, so they ran out behind the fear sign to attack them. You know, and, and, and along the way, they turned out to, uh, to, to their park. They, uh, they ran out to their park to attack the fear sign. So the Israel struck them down. You know, and drove them out of the Israel territory. You know, so now, you know, it's, it, now they call it their territory. Because it wasn't their territory for 20-something 20, 20 years. You know, God gave them that land. And they allowed other people, you know, to oppress them in their own land. And allow people to take over their own land. And they're under other people when it, they're supposed to be in power in their own land. You know, so Israel also had peace with the uh, local Ammonites. And remember, the Ammonites were powerful. And you remember, they can't. That's, that's Esau's um, sons. You know, so that's why God told them, don't get involved with the other women on the opposite side. You know, because down the line, God knows you're going to be fighting among yourself. And that's what happened. Remember months ago, you, you know, they were fighting against every time the Ammonites saw the Israelite. And that's something. They, could, they can't. You know, but every time they saw the Israelites, they, they get on their nerves and they just ready to attack the Israelites, their own camp people. You know, so the Israelites continued to fight against the Philistines until they had driven them from Israel territory completely. You know, they kept on fighting until they drove all of them out completely because it's the Israelite land. And they allowed the Philistines to take over their land. You know, so uh, Samuel had took a stone and set it up between this pole. You know, and he named it, saying, oh, this is for the law. Hey, help us. And, you know, so the Israelites had great difficulty, you know, with the fear sign. But God rescued them and responded. So people set up a large stone as a memory of God's great help and deliverance. You know, because God had to step in and help them. You know, they had to go through the procedure. You know, they had to they had to repent. They had, they had to let God know 
you know, I'm, I'm we wrong from serving all these other gods and, and stuff because they, they, they were straying away from God for like 20 some years, you know. So the first time was Sadum, and they stopped invading Israel territory with you out Samuel light time, you know, and the hand of the law was against the first time. You know, long as God's hand was against the first time, the Israelites had peace. They had peace for like 20 some years, you know, for 20 some years they had peace. So the time. You know, for Akron, you know, to gather that the first time had captured from Israel what restored, you know, to Israel. And so everything was restored back to Israel. They got their own land and they got the honor of God in their possession right now. So in the Israel, they were delivered from the neighbor territory from the hands of the first time, you know, and, uh, and there, there was peace. They had peace between Israel and the Ammonites. You know, remember, they always was against each other. Now, all of a sudden, they got peace between the Ammonites. You know, they already can. You, you know, so in Joshua's time, the Ammonites was powerful tribes. You know, scattered throughout the hill country on both sides of Jordan. You know, occupying the east side of Jordan. Now, Samuel continued as Israel, you know, leader all the days of his life. You know, from year after year. You, you know. Year after year, he was he was still Israel like a uh, leader in their judge. Samuel, you know, was Israelite judge and leader for the rest of his life, you know. But he always went back home, you know, to his real parents, you, you know, uh, and time to time, you know, he built an altar there, you know, uh, to the Lord. You remember his mama all uh, time. You know, that was kind of destroyed. So he went there and tried to fix that and build an altar there to always sacrifice, you know, to the law. And Samuel's parents all from Ramadan, after the destruction of Samuel, you know, Samuel seemed to have fixed, you know, his bond in his father's city. And he built an altar there and always served the Lord there. You know, so God said he was going to send a good leader. He was going to send a good prophet, a good priest, a good minister. Now, he have all multiple hats, you know, and he uh, he doing everything that God said he was going to do. You know, he already led them in the right direction. He had to clean this up and everything. You know, he preached on them about the uh, repentance, you know, and God, it, and God had helped them and heard uh, Samuel prayer. And sacrifice to God heard everything. God came down and saved them. And God kept his hand on the field side, allowing the Israelites to have peace. You know, to have peace of fighting with the field side. Also, they made peace with the Ammonites. You know, so that's all I have for you today. You know, y'all have a blessed night, and I'll see y'all on the next video.